Hey guys, I'm Scott Schneider. This is Stereo Niche. This week we're going to go back to the old fight of new versus vintage, and it's against the speakers this time. So I'm going to compare the Vienna Acoustics Beethoven Baby Grand against my baseline, the New Large Advent. Stick around. Right. Well, let's revisit that whole battle of modern versus vintage. Uh, you know, it's been going on for a long time, it's, and it will never end, of course, but every time I've seen this argument in the forums, predominantly the, the folks who are supporting the modern side of things um, articulate that the materials are better. And, and I, don't, I don't think that can be argued at all. Of course the materials are better. We, we have a lot more knowledge, and we've incorporated that into our modern speakers. So I don't think that is really the question. The question is, does it sound better? That's the question. Is it really sound different and, and do you get a lot better sound with the new technology? And, and that's what I you know, want to try out today and, and see if I can get to the bottom of that. So I'm going to compare the Baby Grand here uh, with the new large Advent, which is my baseline measurement. I always compare all of my speaker uh, reviews to the new large Advent. And I do that because it's a common baseline. There's a lot of Advents out there. If you want to know what an Advent sounds like, you, you can most likely look it up on a local marketplace and find a set. And they're relatively inexpensive and they're a pretty good sounding speaker. So this is what I always compare every review I do. And uh, for that reason, because it's a common denominator, if you will, and you can find them. Um, so I'm gonna do that just like I do. Before we get there, uh, some, some baseline measurements here. Uh, this, these were manufactured around 2014, uh, 2008 to around 2014. Uh, these were manufactured from around uh, 1978 to around 82. The MSRP, this is a big one. MSRP for these, these were a, a higher end model in, from Vienna Acoustics. And these started around 3,500 MSRP and it went up to around 6,000 uh, by the time I think they sort of stop making these and they have an upgraded model now same model but upgraded which is now uh, 11 to 12,000 so even by today's numbers that's not an inexpensive speaker by any means this is a pretty expensive high-end speaker the advent retailed for around 350 in 1982 roughly so at that particular time not a high-end speaker that was uh, you know not a cheapest speaker you could find but certainly not on the high end of the range um, the Beethoven here is, um, let's see, has a uh, sensitivity of around 89 to 91. It did seem to range a little bit. These are 89. The um, uh, impedance is 4 ohm for these and it's 8 ohm for the Advent. And of course, this is a three way and the Advent is a two way. So those are sort of the basics. Now, when we talk about modern materials, it, visually, it's, it's pretty clear. Uh, the the, the new, new speakers just have better um, materials than the old speakers do. Now, I, I, I don't like to take this grill off, uh, to be honest with you, because it's a little bit fragile, and if I keep taking it on and off every review, I'm, I'm kind of worried I'll start to damage it. So uh, I know you. it seems obvious I should have this cover off, but I just want to let you know why I'm not. I do have a picture of it that you'll see in the comparison, so um, you can see it there. But the tweeter uh, for this one is a hand-coated silk dome. And if you can look, look at that and compare it next to the fried egg tweeter of the Advent, pretty amazing difference. It's very obvious which one is the modern one and which one was actually started uh, in 1969. So, you know, the old fried egg tweeter hung around for quite a while. So that's pretty clear. On the other drivers, the mid-range here uses a polycarbonate material, you know, a, little, a lot more, you know, I don't know how exotic that really is. It's probably pretty common, but uh, much more um, durable, I think, and much more rigidity probably than the drivers that were typically used in this era. Now, this is a two-way, so it doesn't have a mid-range. But on the low end, uh, these smaller drivers, it's very similar to this mid, except these have some um, another um, sort of a two-piece cone, and they have some ribs here, which you'll see in the close-up. They give it more rigidity. And there's two of two smaller um, 
mid ranges that will bring up the bottom end, the, the, the low end of the, uh, of the, for the drivers, which is handled typically by the woofer on uh, more vintage speakers. So that in and of itself is what makes the, the, the form factor so different. So in the, in the vintage era, this was pretty much the standard form factor for the vast majority of speakers, uh, from, from Polk to KLH, you know, to Boston Acoustics. So all of those were very similar in size. Same thing, I think, for modern speakers. The majority of the ones I see today look very similar to this. Uh, now, the fit and finish on this, I'll tell you, is top notch. This is a very nice speaker. Um, every detail is, uh, is, is precision, I'll say, all the way around, uh, from the binding post to the drivers to, you know, every part of the finish is, is really top notch. Um, so that goes, of course, with the, with the MSRP. You are getting something for that MSRP. Uh, as well, you know, uh, as the sound here. So um, I think those are the fundamental differences between the two. Um, now the question is, how do they sound compared to each other? So that's the part we're going to get to here in a moment. Uh, before we get there, I'm going to give you some up-close shots of this and let you see how it's a gorgeous speaker. i uh, let you see it up close. So stick around. All right, so hope you enjoyed that uh, up close uh, video there because I think they're you know pretty cool looking speaker, um, you know nice all the way from the front and the back. They're really a cool looking uh, speaker. So uh, let's see. Before we get started, let me sort of jump in and explain if, if it's the first time you've seen one of my videos how I do my reviews. So first off, all of my reviews are compared against the Advent. Uh, and the Advent is probably one of the most popular speakers ever sold. Um, it ranged from around 1969 to 1982, and I don't know if they sold millions, but they probably sold close to that. And it was a fairly mid-range speaker as far as price, but they sounded very good. And so, you know, for that reason, um, I use it as my baseline because you can still find them today. If you want to know where my reference point is, you can find these locally and get an idea. So, so that's why I use them. So 
I compare every speaker in five categories up against the advent, and that's on style, imaging, and then the lows, the mids, and the highs. And so for each one of those categories, I give 20 points uh, in comparison. I do head-to-head, -head, back and forth with the advents, and I assign a point range. Now, for the advents, I've already done that, and they have their assigned points, so it doesn't change each time. It's a standard baseline. So on style, well, you know, let's look at these. As far as look, obviously they look a lot more modern. Uh, they're a, um, you know, fairly new speaker. So this form factor is, uh, you know, pretty much the standard bearer of new speakers. And so the consumer market, uh, you know, migrates to this. It's got a small footprint and can stand, you know, vertically next to the speaker. Um, with, this, with the <laughs> televisions getting much wider, uh, you know, I don't think the speakers could continue to get wide. They certainly probably had to get, you know, narrower to get uh, to stay in the picture there, if you will. But um, so a good looking speaker. So I gave this a 15 uh, versus a 13. You know, in addition to uh, it being a, a nice footprint, the fit and finish is, is here. It, it's all the way around. It's a really good looking speaker and a good quality speaker. I mean, the MSRP is not low, so you, you're getting something for that. All right, so moving on into imaging and sound stage. So compared to the Advent, um, the Baby Grands have a much bigger sound stage. Uh, it's a, okay, so for the Advent, uh, if you haven't seen my videos, the Advent is a very narrow sound stage. So when you're sitting between them, it's just right here. It's, it's directly in the middle and, it, and it's about this big. It's just, it's just small. I'll, put, I'll try to put a visual together for that. On the Baby Grands, it's much, much, it's pretty much between the entire, uh, between two speakers. And it's a bit of an oval shape, actually. It's not, uh, it's kind of squared off. It's not a, you know, a humongous top to bottom range, but it, it sort of is an, a, a bit of an oval, and I'll, I'll put that in the diagram. So that lends itself to, uh, you know, a much better experience. Um, the other part is uh, instrumentation. There are nuances there, and, and um, I'll say it's more articulate there are some um, better placement of instruments and voicing. Voicing is a little bit broader. Now, I was struggling with, did I like that? Uh, the voicing is, you know, sort of Y2, a little muddled, if you will, slightly, compared to the Advent. The Advent is literally someone right in the middle singing to you uh, versus a little bit, you know, broader um, sort of voicing, you know, on the mid-range for the, for the Baby Grand. So, Hard to say sometimes, you know, which, which track you might like better that way, um, but that was a nuance. But overall, uh, I, I did enjoy it more, and I gave the, the Baby Grands a 15, and the Advents have a 13. And by the way, that is an upgraded, updated score for the Advent. I changed that uh, recently, and so it had been a 15, but um, I adjusted that down because I thought that was more appropriate. All right, so on to lows. Okay, so the lows... So I'll remind everyone, you know, technology difference here. Smaller driver, two drivers in a smaller form factor. And this has a larger woofer on its, on, but a larger um, internal um, uh, cap uh, capacity here. So uh, volume. So would we notice a big difference? Is this going to be significantly different and better than the, the Advent? By the way, this is also ported. So you know, how, how much better was it going to be? Well, I couldn't tell much of a difference. Uh, with all that new technology, it uh, just didn't, uh, you know, stand up and take notice like I might have thought it should have. You know, that kind of uh, investment and that kind of technology, it didn't outperform the advent from my perspective. It sounded very close. Um, may have been, you know, slight nuances here, but I honestly couldn't say that it was significantly better. So I ended up giving it the same score. I gave it a 14, just like I gave the Advent. Now, it's not, it doesn't mean it's a bad speaker by any means. I noticed actually in some of the earlier reviews of these, back when these came out, that reviewers were actually pairing this with a subwoofer. So maybe it was always meant to be augmented. I don't know, but for that kind of money, you know, I would expect it to have a little more grunt. But anyway, that is what it is. And uh, so for all that new technology and the low end anyway, uh, I didn't really hear any difference. Uh, for me, it was the same. Um, moving on to the mids. I wrote down smooth, controlled, and voices are pronounced. That's almost what I said for the advents. Um, 
This has no mid-range. This is the dedicated mid-range, but um, I really like the mid-range tonal quality of the Advent, and I really felt the same for the Baby Grands. I didn't sense or feel a, a, a big difference. Now, again, I'll go back to that uh, sound stage. I was struggling a little bit with the, the voicing. Sometimes the voicing was a little too broad for me to sound realistic. I almost felt, you know, I almost, in some tracks, preferred the Advent but it was, it was a little back and forth uh, in between the two. So I ended up giving them both a 16, which is a very good score. And uh, so they're equal. Um, didn't, see, didn't feel much of a difference there. Uh, on to the highs. So this one has a hand-coated silk dome. And in my notes here, and I didn't do this on purpose, but uh, I wrote silky, you know, which... <laughs> seems pretty obvious with a silk dome, but uh, that's what I wrote. It's a, it's a nice, uh, it is silky, it is smooth, and I, I mean, I guess that's why they call it that, but um, I very much liked it. Uh, I liked it better than the Advent. Um, they were just a um, pleasant, um, it was just pleasant and, and very, very accommodating to just about anything. Uh, having had recently heard some, some JBLs that have some harsh tweeters, I uh, much, much, much more prefer these, uh, that tweeter over any of those. Um, so great tweeter, gets another point higher than the Advent. Uh, gives, I gave it a 17 versus the Advent of a 16. So when you total all that up, the Baby Grand gets a 77 against the lowly 72 of the Advent. Now, it did, it did beat it, but you know, only in the sound side of things, it only beat it by a point. Uh, really. Um, the main difference was in the styling and in the imaging. So, is this a better speaker? Well, okay, it's a much more expensive speaker and has better technology. Did it really, you know, lay the carpet down and throw the advent out, you know, in the mud? Not really, not from my perspective. When I think about the price difference uh, between the two, I would, have expe I, I would expect this to have done better be honest. Um, so, you know, does it answer the question of is modern versus vintage, is it better? You know, I think the issue is really that maybe we can say that on average, modern speakers on average are better than the on average quality of vintage speakers. And I think there's, there was a significant improvement um, in speaker technology that benefits that that average group of speakers. In, mo in more vintage speakers, I think from around 75 and forward, you probably had to go up the chain a good bit uh, to, to get that level of quality that I think still stands today. Now, I think there are a lot of speakers made back then on the low end that would be viewed as very harsh. So maybe when we talk about averages, you know, maybe so. Maybe today's speakers on average are better because you can get a high, better technology uh, material less expensively, therefore you can make a less expensive speaker on the low end that sounds pretty darn good. So I think that's probably where it ends up. Um, I'm a little, still a little surprised that at the price point of this speaker, which these new today sell for around $11,000, that it wouldn't have trounced and really just demolished you know, the little advent here. But, you know, from my perspective, it didn't. We'll see. I think um, what I may do is uh, I haven't uh, talked to you guys yet and shown you the IMFs up close because I haven't reviewed them yet, but I've had a lot of fun with these. Uh, this is a very high-end speaker from the early 80s. Uh, comparatively speaking, it, was more, it would be more expensive than the, uh, the Beethovens here, but, um, you know, it'd be interesting to see how they pair up, uh, how they go head-to-head. But um, anyway, that's my review. Um, by the way, the, the wife acceptance factor of these is high. Uh, my wife has already told me these are coming in the house and the set I have in there is coming out. So I'll uh, tell you what those are when they get out here. But uh, after I finish playing with these out here, these will, will be going inside. So, you know, it's a great speaker. If you've got them, I'm, I'm sure you enjoy them and I'm going to uh, take them in and uh, have them next to some other vintage speakers in my system. So. I think that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm sure the, the comments will be many. Let me know your thoughts, your experience, and um, 
If you want to keep up, hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time.